Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcve.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Mary Urena. And this is It's Movie Time. Okay, we have our distance. We do. Well, all right, so we're good to go. Uh, but we have a film called Nobody Knows I'm Here. Mary, what is? what kind of a title is that? Well, nobody knew about the film uh, until uh, Netflix picked it up for distribution, and this is Netflix's first Chilean film, I believe. Well, it's probably my first Chilean. I don't can't remember. I can't either. It's a first for all of us. This is set in southern Chile, in a rather lush part of that, and maybe even an island. I, I got the impression that it predominantly takes place on an island. Uh -huh. um, the central character is Guillermo, um, Mimo is his nickname, yes. in this modern time. <clears throat> You're reminding me that, that the contrast between the beautiful lush and their solitary, introverted life is, is, a, is a nice one for me. Yeah, it was definitely a juxtaposition. <laughs> oh, um, and in fact, the cinematography choices um, don't celebrate the lushness of where they're living um, because it's a rather uh, dark cinematography. Yes. Um, approach both the interior and exterior yes. scenes. In fact, I think you only see blue sky twice mm -hmm. and, in the whole film. And you know, since most of us are watching it on screens at home, you're losing some. The yes. darkness, I can't get that finer. Um, it was something that I wish to have seen in the theater, you know, because I hate losing that. Uh, it presents rather slowly that he carries some dark secret that has pushed him to this island to live with his uncle and to be very nonverbal. I, I honestly think he speaks less than 20 lines. And in the you whole are film. absolutely right. <laughs> Somebody has looked at that and, and figured about 20 lines. Yeah, and he, um, so the story develops over time of what it is that this secret is that he's been carrying that burdens him. Yeah, and um, you know, it's central, so we need to reveal that. It's kind of central to why you would want to watch this. So uh, it's a spoiler alert. Folks. Sure, it's a spoiler, but it's, it's unavoidable. Because this is the heart. We don't have to say what the ending is, but sure. we can certainly say that for Mimo or Memo, uh, played by George Garcia, I think. And yeah, Jorge Garcia. Yeah, and he was on Lost. Yes. People will remember him from Lost. That was his probably biggest, most yeah. well known role. And as I recall, very heavy set. Yes. Uh, grossly overweight. And I think in Lost he had curly, long curly hair. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and, and I, you know, I, I'm not that familiar with it, but people will know him. Yeah. We have a Milli Vanilla, or whatever you call it. Milli Vanilli. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Milli Vanilli situation here. Okay, the fact that I know the answer to that actually is frightening. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't blanked them out of my mind. <laughs> so they've stolen his voice. Yes. His dad has sold his voice. The kid has obvious potential. And somebody seduces dad into selling the voice to give it to a cuter kid. Um, and he lives his life thinking about this. Yes, and many times during the film, uh, it plays out that he's living this fantasy life of performance. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be what brings him peace and solace, is that he's living out what his true voice and calling with his beautiful singing voice were and are. Oh. So in terms of being a fable of, of life, it, it really does reflect about finding your true voice and letting your true voice be heard, which is rather poignant, not only for the character, but I also think in the time that we're living in with racism coming to the fore and the issues of social justice associated with that. Um, and we're really in a time now where we're talking about, you know, for true voices to be heard. Oh, yeah. And you know, on the other side of that, for me, it's not fulfilling oneself. That is, or having a disappointment that one cannot get over in life. That from that, and it's a big disappointment for somebody as gifted as he, 
and living his life in solitude. Uh, as you say, he even makes his own costumes with the sewing machine mm -hmm. and plays out his fantasies, but in the end he's, he's obsessed with the fact that his voice was stolen. And he seems to, he's so inarticulate to be unable to deal with it, uh, the withdrawing from life. So I think of uh, some of the topics you're talking about, but also how people can have a disappointment that makes them withdraw from life. And I think that's where the film, that solitude and that withdrawing. Um, but what could save you, Mary, in a situation like that? <laughs> well, it certainly wasn't Mimo's father, <laughs> um, who not What was, a creep. What a creep. <laughs> sold his voice, and then um, it's alluded to through a confrontation with his father that uh, his father had to spend a lot of money um, to get help for his son, but he really ended up sending him from Miami, um, where uh, we learned that Mimo was born and, and raised in his early childhood, and that's where the um, voice audition and then the voice being stolen and ghosted by a, a better looking kid, yeah. some, a kid who was in a better package, um, happens. So he's he's basically shunted off to southern Chile, about as far away as you can get from Miami, and um, living on this island sheep farm with his uncle. So the, the father uh, certainly didn't offer any solace, but he is befriended by a woman from the mainland across the bay from the island where he lives named Marta, yes. who um, for whatever reason, which I think remains a little unclear in the film, uh, starts to befriend him. Now, I, I heard somebody mention that she was a, she was enjoined to do that, to bring him out, but I, I find no evidence of that. I didn't find any yeah. evidence of that. But I also true. find myself questioning her attraction to him. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. That, it was it was unclear and not very well developed. Yes, that, 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 that part of it wasn't. Um, she's certainly not a beauty. No. Yeah, uh, but she, uh, as his uncle says, the skinny lady. Well, and she, and compared to Jorge Garcia, who is yes. a very large man, yes. the woman they cast as Marta, not only is she skinny, but she's so petite, and, yes. and you're just looking at them, and, and they're just, they are opposites. They, and, you know, I just, I love the way that they interact, I love the way she tries to get inside him, tries to understand him, and how they develop it in the story. It's really pretty terrific. Now, And she does serve as a conduit for, I think, another intentional commentary by the film about modern media. Oh, yes. And an uh, invasion of privacy. Yes, and, yes. And through something, uh, to tell you how isolated his life is, he doesn't even know what a cell phone is. They don't even have a telephone on the island. Yep. The only way that they communicate with the outside world is people who bring sheepskins to be cleaned and yes. ready for sale to the island, and she happens to deliver, Marta does, for her uncle. Yes. And that's how she starts to befriend um, Mimo. But it um, through teaching him how to use a cell phone and, and actually videoing him yes. yes, singing, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that video gets out, and because of what happened in his past, jur a journalist friend of hers becomes interested in Mimo. And you know, she reminds me of so many characters that I really like. The outsider who changes things. The, the, almost like a home invasion, but not brutal. <laughs> right. But she comes, and she is a change agent. Right. And of course, yeah, the electronics are so out of place. But yet they're in place. Well, from the commentary about how invasive media can be, at one point, Nemo's walking on the island after this video that Marta has I know what you're unleashed say. Go ahead. in the world, and all of a sudden there's a drone like flying right in front of Mary, me. Mary, yes. So <laughs> I'm so glad because I was going to ask your interpretation of that. First of all, we're becoming more aware of drone shots, and there's some beautiful drone shots in this. Oh. Absolutely, of the island. Bird's eye views of the yeah. island. Yeah. And I love there are several where her boat yes. goes away. And you see and the his lake. Boat too. Yes, yeah. and his boat too. And very nice about their loneliness um, and the attempt of, for the world to uh, 
attend to them. But that drone shot is so odd. Mary it was very odd. <laughs> What's coming? Well, and if you think about our own lives, I mean, you and I know what a drone is. Yes. Um, we know what smartphones yes. are. Um, and to have this very isolated young man invaded by these things, we're at least equipped to know what they are yes. and, and hopefully have a monicum of how to handle them. Not that anyone is stalking us for any media and Nobody basic cares type that of purpose. Much. Nobody cares. <laughs> But for someone like him, I mean, you can only imagine like how much that is playing in his mind and in his heart of what's happening yes. and not understanding what's happening. Yes, yes. Because um, it, it, it was very invasive. Um, and, and one note, because I know you just... <laughs> no, no, I know. I'm just saying we do chat. <laughs> Um, is that this film was actually set to premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival, I believe. And in fact, the director of the film was recognized for this film for, and I'm going to get the actual award name wrong, but it was new director of, um, yeah. not documentaries, but... Um, well, he's done a lot of short, uh, short films. Short films, short films but yeah. it, it was a new director in a particular genre. He actually received an award and recognition oh, for this good. film. So it's unfortunate that it did not get to premiere at Tribeca, but yeah. it is fortunate that Netflix picked it up for Oh, I know. Um, Mary the Enemy, I think, is powerful. Uh, what do you think about that? I thought the ending was very powerful because he does find a way through unexpected circumstances to sing. Yes. And to have his truth Yes. Be told. Yes. But the ending's not clean. Um, <laughs> it doesn't leave you with any full resolution no. as to what that momentous act uh, that Mimo does in singing actually has long term. Yes. Uh, I felt good about the reveal for the people who were there. I felt good about that. I felt that they had handled that really nicely rather than making it. A big deal. It is a big deal. But that happens, and he's gone. Mm -hmm. But the final shot, uh, which we can't reveal either, is very telling. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I thought, very nicely done. Uh, as, as I think is implied here, the connection with human beings is not, it can't be tossed off. It's such an important part of everything that we do. And since the motif here is isolation with, and being withdrawn, both the uncle and the people from the land give you some sense of how important it is to be, to be connected. And so that's why I like that last part. I can definitely see why you know it. I do think there's a beautiful simplicity to this story. Yes. With layers of complexity as you think further on it, yeah. um, but I do think the director made some um, odd choices, the drone being one, Yes. yes. and also um, in the reveal moment, one thing that I questioned, because a lot of his fantasy performances are, of, are, are lit in a red light, and at one point during this final act of singing, he's lit in red light. And so it made me wonder, well, did that really happen or well, and that's did great, it that's not happen? Question, so it? I thought it yeah. created some choices that were made, for me, created some confusion. <laughs> Here is our guest oh, uh, to, to give the kind of realistic view of it. <laughs> uh, I appreciate your enthusiasm continually for the dark <laughs> and dreary. Right. Films of this world. And it is on Netflix. It is.